Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're looking at a 1998 Nissan Skyline. This one here is a uh, 25GT turbo model, so that's the inline six-cylinder single turbo Neo version of the RB25 engine. Puts out 280 horsepower in this iteration. Now this car has 316,000 kilometers, which makes it one of the highest mileage Skylines that I've personally seen. And here in Japan, people don't drive cars as often or as much as they do in North America or Canada, where I come from. And so it is pretty rare to see one of these Skylines with this high of mileage, but it's going to be a little bit interesting to see the condition of it, considering this is going to be the type of Skyline that most people who want Skylines are going to end up targeting. It is going to cost a good amount less when you're... Uh, when you're looking at one with this high of mileage. And I would say that probably for a Skyline, your average mileage is probably between 100,000 and 200,000 kilometers. So this one's probably another 50% higher mileage. Overall, I have to say that I'm pretty satisfied with the condition. With these higher mileage cars, you are taking on more risk because there's more time and more mileage for the damage to accrue. But in this one, I'm pretty happy with it. So first off, the engine, both the uh, engine oil and the coolant look to be fine. Coolant is a little bit on the low side, but nothing I would really worry about. You can see inside here, the coolant is two centimeters down from the neck. Now the timing belt was changed in 2010 at 179,000 kilometers. And so in the last 13 years, it has gone basically 130,000 kilometers. Now with the Skyline, especially the R34s, it seems, you're always gonna wanna check the strut towers because they can accumulate rust. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I believe it has something to do with how hard you drive your Skyline. See, the Skyline has a whole bunch of these seams here between sandwiched together metal. And you drive the car hard, and it puts a lot of stress on this. Hence the reason why they have strut tower braces is to kind of stop those from flexing around. I think that the caulking or whatever type of material that they use to seal this up over time gets brittle. If you drive the car too hard with that brittle caulking, it starts to crack it. You can see the beginnings of it here. The crack lets moisture in and then it starts to rust. You probably want to get this one handled before it becomes worse. And this is something I would definitely worry about for higher mileage Skyline. You can see one, two, three areas here. And on the other side, there's one. It is definitely, definitely not the worst that I've seen, not even close. As far as rust goes, I would say that this is probably a 2 out of 10, but you never really know until you open that up and see what needs to be repaired and what needs to be replaced. I think you can get that repaired without actually replacing your strut tops or whatnot, uh, but I will understand that like uh, some shops are going to have different opinions than I, am, I do on that, and some might say that you have to replace those. I don't know. Um, really? Personally, I probably wouldn't worry about it too much. I would maybe sand this down, get as much of the rust out, put some sort of sealant on, and then paint it again. And you're probably good to go for a while. Okay, now let's close the engine room. It is a little bit dirty in here, but whatever. Oh, oil cooler, factory oil cooler. Always cool to see. Now the hood on these, not the GTR, because the GTR hood is made out of aluminum, but these GTS-T ones made out of steel, this hood feels like it's over 20 kilograms, maybe 25 kilograms. You want to change one of those out to an aftermarket one and you can lose a lot of weight there, especially weight at the front. It already is a heavy engine because the inline six cylinder. It's worth it, an inline six is amazing, but uh, yeah, heavy hood on top of heavy engine, probably not so good. Okay, so here's the auction inspection sheet. This one's going over to New York in the USA, and we are getting a lot of these purchases for the Skyline R34 now that they just barely became legal. This one here has an automatic transmission, which I realize is going to be not everyone's favorite, but I will say the auto ones generally aren't driven as hard, so less chance of the rust on the strut towers, if my theory is correct there. Um, also, maybe the engine is a little bit better condition than a manual transmission one. And then, worst comes to worst, you can swap the transmissions. I don't know the cost, but it's probably somewhere around $5,000 to get that done. And it's fairly common here in Japan. So, there is that as a possibility. Uh, compared to a manual transmission, an automatic one will generally be about a million yen less. So, there is room uh, for getting an auto 
paying to get it swapped and then having a good car because of that you'll just have one that was originally an auto and so there are some issues that are a little bit beyond the scope of this video anyway let's get into it it's a 1998 skyline 25 gt turbo auction grade 3.5 both interior and exterior grade d so keep that in mind while i'm taking a look at the sheet 316 203 kilometers uh, automatic transmission abs airbag alloy wheels power steering and power windows and it's dual airbag and this this is just the beginnings of when the dual airbags were mandatory here in japan okay it comes with warranty papers and owner's manual the sales points here are rb25 do det neo 6 neo is the japanese pronunciation i guess we say neo in english so neo 6 turbo xenon headlights they're unfortunately fairly cloudy on this one original steering wheel thank you so much seller for saying that the original steering wheel is this is on this car because when you get a look at it it's in really rough condition toll collection box uh some dealer history papers they don't say which ones and then the report here from the auction it says front pillar small dent now i took a look the front pillar is here and inside here where the door is hinged onto I didn't see any damage on it anywhere. And I got an extra video sh showcasing that. Door mirror paint peeling, you can see that right away, is on the, the hold-on bracket, whatever that's called. Carpet is ripped medium. It's actually a uh, rip in the driver's foot well. I'll show you that in a second. Steering wheel grip is bad. It's really bad, it needs to be replaced. Interior dirty, interior scratched. Seat dirty, seat saggy. Exterior has very shallow scratches. And then uh, trunk trunk dampers don't work. And because the trunk dampers don't work, you can't actually open the trunk without the key. You need to stick the key into the key slot and then pull the trunk up at the same time. Um, the latch inside the car, usually it's near the, the fuel filler latch. You usually pull that and the trunk will pop open a little bit and then you come here and you grab it up. It won't do that because the dampers are dead. And you can probably get an aftermarket one to line up just to get the size if you didn't want an official one from Nissan. Now the body here, we have an A3 on the front bumper, repainted hood, uh, P3, P2 and P3 here. Uh, P is bad paint, and it could be bad for a few different reasons, but in this case, it's because it's peeling fairly badly on both of these panels, okay? Got B2 here, B2 here, B2 here, that's medium dense, and then the back bumper A1. S2 is rust on the roof, and so I highlighted the three most important things for the body there. Now, let's take you for a tour around it. And the rust on the roof is much, uh, much less bad than I thought that it would be. And so that is a win on this one. The Skyline R34, of course, is quite iconic. The GTR is the iconic one, but the GTRs are also, I guess at the moment of shooting this, about four to 10 times more than the GT, the 25 GT Turbo. Both of them you get 280 horsepower out of. The GTR is a more special feeling engine, especially once you get used to many, many different types of engines. There's a big difference in how it feels, even though it's the same, well, technically the same power according to Nissan, but the GTR engine is more powerful. Uh, but this is a great car. I had a R33, the 25 GT Turbo, or no, the GTS. 25T, I guess it's called for the uh, R33. That was my first car here in Japan probably 15 years ago. I adored that car. It is such a nice car. It's fast, but it's not too fast. It feels really good to drive around. It's a decent amount of space. It looks awesome. I loved it. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the details here. Front bumpers. Uh, for the R34, there's like I don't know, like seven different front bumpers for them. This one here is one of the more aggressive ones, and I quite like it. Take a look at this. There's a little vent there. That is a vent for your intercooler, and it's only on this side. The air comes in here, goes through the intercooler, and then vents out there. Cool little thing. I love a vent that is there for function, especially when it's asymmetrical. Okay. Now, the hood probably needs to be repainted. Even though the paint itself is fairly good, there are a number of fairly large scratches, which might not show up too well in a video. There's one here, the one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, 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 here. There's a rock chip with some rust in it here, and then a few other rock chips on the front. Okay. Now, they called this a W2. 
even though they should have called it maybe an A2 on the hood, maybe even an A3, maybe even an S1 for that rust. And here's something that I really got to kind of stress. When the vehicle has higher mileage or is an overall bad condition car, the inspector might, might feel pressured into getting all of the notes on there quickly so that they can get on to the next car without spending too much of their time. I'm not sure if they actually have like a time limit per car or a certain amount of cars that they have to hit per hour, but I get a feeling like a bad condition or high mileage car is more likely to have things missed on it. Such as that. Is it the worst thing? No, you can probably polish these to a reasonable amount, but something like that's gonna need, you know, grinding down and repainting. Okay, now the headlights are pretty faded. On both of them, you might be able to restore them. Don't really know. And then this one here, the paint is all peeled off. So there should have been clear coat on this section. And then this and the door were both repainted and then they were repainted poorly and they started to peel. So yeah, you're gonna need some new paint on here and on the door, potentially on the hood also on the rear spoiler and the rear uh, taillight surrounds. But here you can totally see where the paint is peeling down here. And then the same thing on this door, including here. Okay, and around the door handle has a lot of scratches. Okay, there are some dents on this side, but all the dents in the car are pretty small. Um, less than I would expect judging by the auction inspection sheet. The worst part is maybe this one here, and then a series of like uh, four of four small ones in this area that all kind of stack up together. Honestly speaking, they don't stand out a lot. Not like that peeling paint does. Okay, tires come from 2021, which is kind of nice. All four of the wheels have bad scrapes on them and you get a monoblock caliper on the rear, two piston rear four piston front. It's pretty common on these turbo skylines. They've had them since the R32, like that. Okay, we have surface rust on here. Don't know if we can get a proper focus on that. Same thing goes on this one over here. Okay, rust on the roof. You got this little spot here, which is not too bad. And I did get pictures of these, so you can zoom in to all of the rust to see how bad it is. The video I think is pretty good, but for something like this, a picture is better. Okay, it's on the, the railing here. It honestly doesn't look like a, it's hard to repair compared to what you would expect from an S2. Okay. Coming down, oh, we got a little chip there and peeling on this door mirror, fade on the door mirror. Also, the folding function doesn't work on that one over there but it does in this one, the electronic folding. Okay, a little bit of uh, disintegration of this piece. A little bit of the paint has faded off of this, except for a couple of spots, so it looks a little bit uneven. UV cut glass, my R33 had that too. Um, many females in Japan, not so much males, but many females in Japan are very terrified of their skin getting darker. And so having the UV cut glass, if you've got an Asian wife, or maybe just Japanese, I don't know, the rest of Asia, it's going to be a, a big plus. My wife was very happy about that. Okay, so tons and tons and tons of little scratches around this area. Also an edge along here that has taken on some chips and has started a little bit of surface rust there. Uh, no rust at the um, sills down below anywhere there, and the underside is actually looking pretty good. Let's just open that carefully. We got a touch of rust right on the very bottom of this door. Okay, and there are some scuffs along here. Most of that you'll be able to clay bar off. Okay, a few dents in this area. Again, like three or four of them together. And then the fuel filler cap doesn't line up very well. Okay, trunk looks good, but the rear spoiler is a little bit uh, lacking in shine. You can try something like a ceramic coating or glass coating on there. And then the headlight surrounds. Yeah, the thing is, the paint works great on any of the metal surfaces. Paint tends to fade faster on anything that's plastic. So that's rear bumpers, tail lights, spoilers. Okay, got a big scuff there. 
original exhaust. Kind of weird to get that here in Japan. A little paint crack there. Missing the badge, but there's actually the badge inside the car. Now I am pointing out a lot of bad things, but the job of this report is to point out the bad things on it. It's not to gloss over anything. It's a condition report. It's not a sales pitch or something like that. And so I think a lot of people buy a car and then they see these reports and then they're like, oh my gosh, what did I do? And then when they get the car, they're fairly happy with it. Um, just do keep that in mind. I, I'm not gonna pull any punches no matter what when I shoot your car. Um, and I will say, if this were my car, I'd be satisfied given the uh, all things considered for higher mileage skyline. I will say, that one was not so lucky. It came in today with a blown head gasket. And it's something that can happen. We're in the process of seeing what kind of claim we can make to the auction, but it's not always possible. So I can't really uh, pop the trunk with this. You can hear that it actuates, but because of those dampers, it doesn't work. So I'll show you the trunk. It's relatively clean. Lots of scratches around the keyhole here. So put that in. Try not to scratch anything. Okay. Fairly good. And underneath there has no rust or anything. And yeah, for some reason, Nissans are fairly prone to rust. Not as bad as Mitsubishi, but the Nissans are. Higher mileage one, more chance of it being rusted on the underside because rocks get kicked up and whatnot. This one looks pretty good. Going to the interior, I'm pretty happy with it. It's not perfect. It's probably a better grade interior than the exterior is. Remember, exterior has no big dents or anything. It is not really so bad, all things considered. Steering wheel, terrible. It feels all cracked and gross when you touch it. Sun damage over here, peeling section over here. And yeah, these steering wheels take a beating. Uh, seats, they're pretty good. A little bit of sagginess on only the driver's seat on the outside lower bolster there. And a little bit starting to get threadbare along here. You can see the white. Okay, the rip is right here. This is where I guess he rested his foot. That's not where I ever rest my foot because they have a dead pedal over there for that purpose. But uh, yeah, somebody put their foot there. And they're pretty common for this area here to get worn out because this is the pivot point between your brakes and the go pedal. Okay, to the interior here, decent looking gauges, but this was before gauges got really cool looking. You get three extra gauges there instead of the uh, TV screen that the GTR gets. The AC works, power steering works well. It actually feels like a much lower mileage car in terms of shifting, e-brake, power steering, throttle feel, brake feel. It's all pretty good. If, if I didn't know the mileage, I might have guessed 160,000 maybe. This is a bit sticky. It's what happens with the R34s in Japan. Okay. Doesn't smell bad inside the car. Cigarette lighter's never been used, but it has been smoked in. We know because headliner has discolored a little bit and it has this pilled look to it, which means that someone's used an extractor machine to look, clean it. Probably like a gas station. Here in Japan, a lot of people get their cars washed at gas stations. And most gas stations offer some sort of a service for car cleaning. Okay. CD player and tape deck. Yes, who's got a tape? Nobody. Even when this car came out in 98, tapes were already past the prime. Kind of weird that somebody bought a head unit with a tape deck. So AC is nice and cold. Um, nothing to say there. No weird sounds from behind the dashboard. Shift yourself section. So you shift this down, push it over, and you can go plus and minus, or you can use the buttons that are on the steering wheel. It's not as good as a manual transmission, but you can shift if you want to. Okay. Let's go to the rear seats. We're going a little bit extra on this video, so my apologies for taking up your time if you're watching this. We're almost at 20 minutes. We are almost at the end though. So fairly clean back seats. Okay. The GTR doesn't do this, but the GT, uh, 25 GTT does. You put the seat up, back and it locks into the most upright position, like a passenger seat usually does but they got it correct on all of the GTRs in that it will remember your incline any time that you change it. Um, I don't know why they didn't do that for these ones. Maybe it was a bit cheaper. Okay, 
So it needs a little bit of work, but it's still a good solid car in my opinion. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us. There's a link to our website and how to contact us in the description. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.